Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. Today we're standing out here in our blackberry patch and what we're doing is me and Val, we actually built a trellis arm, mainly him. Uh, yesterday I was up at, at the farmer's market, but what we're doing today is we gotta go ahead and measure exactly how many trellis arms we need. We're doing the RCA flip trellis, I'm gonna explain all that whenever it gets a chance. So what we're doing today is we're measuring the rows and counting how many arms we need at every single row. And I'm gonna show you guys a blackberry here real quick. They're growing like crazy. So this is the plants right here. They're about two, three foot tall. We got new shoots coming up from the bottom. So today the plan is we got a few more uh, uh, blackberry plants to plant and then come through and measure them. I'm gonna show you guys our prototype trellis farm that we made. And then we're gonna go ahead and um, talk to a, one of our uh, shops around here to chop um, uh, chop off the plates and something. I'm gonna explain all that in a bit. So that's the plan for today. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that little bell notification because I'm coming to you guys three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And today is just another day here on the farm. We're getting some serious stuff done, getting the blackberries finished. So stay tuned. All right, so what we're doing now is we met, we're measuring out the rows, or on average, the first nine rows, they need nine arms because we're putting the arms every 30 foot. And then these next two rows here are going every eight arms, and then we'll got to measure out the rest. So we have 21 rows here total. So that's what we're doing today is measuring how many we need. And I'm going to go ahead and put them up here. We got to build them first. I'm going to show you guys a prototype when we get back in the shop. But it's just we got to find out how many you need you know we we did a, a, a 5,000 feet divided by 30 feet is 166 arms but we're not we got to we, we got to measure the end rows because if you don't measure the end rows then we don't know exactly how it is so we're gonna see how many arms we need now that's that on measuring them we need uh 187 arms in total well we're just gonna go ahead and make 200 just in case we need some extras so we still got to come now we got five rows here we haven't planted we never got the chance to the plants are growing like crazy inside the greenhouse there but we got these five rows to plant and then we got these ones already planted the plants are growing like crazy we got to probably come through and irrigate them here pretty soon so that's how many arms we need total now we got to go back in the shop and uh connect the transplanter see how much um I'm going to show you guys that trellis arm and explain to you guys how exactly how that works. So, Alrighty, so this is the trellis arm right here. I'm going to kind of explain this real quick. So this thing, what, what this thing does, it, this one goes in the ground two foot up to here. And this is the way it's going to look in the summertime, but in the fall time, what we do is... System, and then in the springtime when the blackberries start flowering, you lay them down like this so all the blossoms come on one side and then whenever they're done blossoming you pick this arm up so then all your fruit is on this side and then this arm here is to train the blackberries whenever they're growing in mid-season so what you do the plants are right here you train them and then you put them on this one and then whenever you, th these ones are done producing you cut them out take the, the you completely strip this one out and then move the whole entire all the blackberries on this side so the system it's called the RT, uh, rca uh trellis system the rotating cross arm because the cross arms put back and forth so we got to build up 200 of these we're making out of one uh two inch square tubing we got a two by three square tubing in these flat plates and then we got bolts and stuff so we got we, we got a drill press and everything so this is how it looks so what you do is you put them like this in the uh, winter and then in the spring in the summertime you pick them up so you have a wall of blackberries on this side the sun's beating down on this side the berries never get touched by the sun and it's just a one win for everybody so yep yep this is exactly how it is Okay, 
So a little bit of the uh, manufacturer parts. What we have here, I'm gonna show you guys, is these uh, two plates here and the bolts and screws that go through there like that. So this is what we gotta build. And then we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and weld these. And the thing about this one, the, this arm rests on this one. So that means whenever, it, so it doesn't have any room to play. And then we got the pins. So it's just a matter of building them now. And then two inch square tubing. It's not super thick. We got the, uh, the chop saw there, chop everything up. So th what you're looking at here, I think it's gonna, to buy one pre-manufactured, it costs um, $75 an arm because it's made out of fiberglass. And I was talking to our specialist, um, uh, Southwest Missouri Commercial Horticultural Specialist, and he said the one at the research station out there in Mount Vernon, said that one is trash because the fiberglass and the wind, we get a lot of high winds and stuff. And he said it's already starting to deteriorate in three years. So that's why we started, decided to go with steel. And with us building it, it's gonna cost us, I believe, right under $50 an arm. So it's a lot cheaper for us to, um, to build it. It's made out of steel, but then we gotta have, we gotta have the time to actually build it so you know the reason we're building out of steel is because we want it to last you know the but the berries still produce you know 10 to 12 years so that's right it's nice to put in the work now but later on down the road we don't have any problems with the trellis arm breaking or anything so it's just a matter of time now to come through and um first we're going to come through make all the different parts then we're going to weld them put the pins drill them so i'm going to show you guys the whole guys the whole process there so 200 it is you know this is how it's supposed to look and it's going to be awesome once it's done Alrighty, so what happened to this reefer is my brother Adrian he took it to the market on Saturday and the hoses from the Freon rubbed together so all the Freon leaked out so on Monday I turned it on and plugged in it and it didn't work so it wasn't cooling hard enough so what we're doing now is we got to put all these tomatoes inside this trailer here because now it's getting cold I mean it's hot in there now but we got to we, we put them in our store and then it's about 70 degrees in there. They're nice and firm there. But Val's on the, the forklift there. He's gonna go ahead and put them inside here. And then all these other boxes that we graded, we put them in the 10 pound flats there. We're gonna go ahead and put them in there. We got some more tomatoes out there in the store. Got it? I'm gonna move the center, bro. Okay, better not make any fall, bro. Alright, Fifteen per. Because well, there's thirteen. The trailer only holds five thousand. That jack holds five thousand pounds. Well, probably should put a jack stand. What other crate? So the reason we put these in all the boxes we had here is because we just leave them one stack here and they don't bruise up and the air circulation is flow through here pretty good. And the reason we had to put some in black crates is because we ran out of these boxes. So it's just, we gotta put them on these because they store a lot better. They're not stacked on each other. So, on Monday night, me and Adrian graded uh, the rest of those tomatoes, just close to 2,000 pounds that we graded. So, it's just, now we gotta store them. Those are all the seconds there. There's a box of seconds right there. So, it's just, gotta love tomatoes.
tomatoes are now all in here. These are, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lights in here real quick. But these are the ones that we graded. These are the ones that were picked on Monday. We didn't time to grade, and then we didn't have time to grade these. They're still nice and firm. Good looking. These are the ones we graded. Then we just have these 15 pound flats and then the 10 pound flats here we put them in so the air can flow. And whenever tomatoes are stacked like this, they bruise up a whole lot easier. So this is why we stopped putting them in these, but we're probably gonna sell these today at the farmer's market here in our store. So whenever we run out of these, then we're gonna go ahead and uh, grade these ones and put them in the same boxes here so they can store a lot longer. So, yep, yep, reefer's working nice, nice and keep it about 55 degrees in here. The tomatoes will be perfect. So time to close her up and get out of here. Alrighty, so it is the next morning. And uh, yesterday, after putting those tomatoes in storage, we had a pack for farmer's market. And then we went to farmer's market and then uh, got back got back home and didn't really do much after that. So today is uh, another day. We got to do some other stuff. We actually have, we got to mow the grass around the trees. We got to, my uh, Danny's actually pressure washing the skits right now and it's just go, go, go. We got to bow what he did yesterday. I'm going to show you guys here real quick. He uh, tilled up this land here while I was at farmer's market. And first we got to come finish through planting the rest of those five rows. And then come lay down the mulch. The plastic mulch for this. Probably run it again one more or two more times. Bring some topsoil. That's all gravel there that was there. So we got to finish off, off the blackberries today. But I don't know if we're, we're actually going to get it all done today. We'll see. Just takes a lot of work. It's super hot out here today. It's supposed to be one of the hottest days of the year out here. So, getting, re getting close to reach close to 100, but it's just burning hot. It's early morning. I'm already sweating. So, we'll see what we do out here on the farm. It's just another beautiful day if you stay in the shade. So, Val, he mowed the grass yesterday on his property here, and he had a busted tire. So now I got to take it off. And uh, my dad didn't take it to the shop. It's like, how in the world do you even do this, man? And then he lets me fix all his problems. So he's out here, left it here all night, middle of nowhere. So got to take it off. See how long that takes. Like literally, it went flat instantly. How many know that hit? Now, as we got to pull this truck to the shop, this is Dallas Cummins here, and uh, his clutch went out. He used to haul RVs cross country. Now he got him, he bought that produce stand. But the clutch is out on this one. We got to connect in. We're going to pull it all the way to uh, town with this. With my dad's truck. It's flatbed. So that's the plan. That's what we're doing right now. Then I got to go around and uh, kill, kill some more weeds around the trees there. Got a million things going on. So, so this is how it's going to be. His truck is a nice one. He has all this fancy gadgets and stuff. He used to haul RVs. This is the way we're going all the way to town and back. You're gonna drop off the shop, change the clutch, and they're gonna get it done. Alrighty, so the truck is here and now. We bring it. This is in town here at this clutch axle transmission shop here. We got the went pretty good now. This smells like brakes because I was I was holding the brakes back the whole time and then Val he was just pulling it. So made it here safety. The got to comes looking good. Alrighty, so we got back home and Val actually had to leave the to town to show the prototype. To that middle shop I was telling you guys about, and uh, what I'm doing now is I come through with the week here on this three old uh, gold malicious. These are nice big trees; they've grown a lot this year. We fertilize them real good, and uh, we, I already came in through once this spring, killed off all the grass, but it grew back. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do to keep the trees nice and healthy. I want to show you guys the how it worked on this side right here. This is the high density here, the row of high densities, all the rows here. You guys can see here the the grass has died off. And the trees are nice and healthy, still going to grow. So we're going to keep it like this the rest of the season. And all these ones are still pretty young. But next year, the plan is, or this fall, is exactly, is come through with some pre-emergent herbicide. And to kill off all the wheat seed that is in the soil. In the fall time, spray it in the fall, late fall. And then hopefully by next year, all the seeds, all the seeds will die off. So they won't germinate in the, in, the, in the springtime. And then we got some problem with Johnson grass, as you guys see here. We're going to have to come through with that with some more... Uh, we kill the kid off, kill it off to make sure it's all nice and clean around the trees. But overall, that's the biggest our biggest uh, weed problem is the Johnson grass. But we're hopefully kill it all off and not have a problem ever again with this. So it's just a matter of doing it now. You know, it's just getting out here doing it. So as you guys saw early on yesterday, 
we got that the trellis arm up and running our, our prototype then we started the tomatoes and i had to run and tell my brother this morning and now we're doing this so that is going to be pretty much it for today if you guys haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button like this video if you guys have any questions comments leave me on the comment section below don't forget to hit that little bell notification because i'm coming to you guys three days a week tuesdays thursdays and saturdays and i want to say thanks for watching up to this point you guys have a good day and we'll see you next time